The gypsum sand dunes of White Sands National Park are a spectacle to behold. If you get lost among the sands, you'd be more likely to think you got lost at the beach. Thousands of footprints litter the rolling dunes as 600,000 plus people visit them each year to leave their mark. Therefore, footprints are a common theme at the natural wonder. As amazing as the dunes and its microhabitats of lizards, birds, insects, and mammals are, they are only a blip on the geologic timeline. They were formed only during the last tens of thousands of years. Before the dunes, the area, called Tularosa Basin, was wetter than it is today. A huge lake, called Lake Otero, covered the area and vegetation was abundant. All of this attracted all sorts of extinct megafauna. Camels, big cats, dogs, ground sloths, bison, and mammoths. Among them were teeny little hairless apes that made a living off their hides. Between 23,000 and 21,000 years ago, people were running around the mud along the shoreline of Lake Otero, gawking at the beasts or playing with one another as captured by a recently described set of tracks left in the hardened gypsum sand of White Sands. If the dates of these tracks hold up to further scrutiny, these tracks may not only represent the oldest known human inhabitants of North America, but could be groundbreaking to the field of American archaeology in pushing back the arrival of humans to the continents tens of thousands of years before previously thought. During the greatest extent of the last ice age, about 26,500 to 19,000 years ago, a big stretch of land connected Russia and Alaska. This slice of now submerged land is called Beringia, and it offered people of Eurasia a tasty new experience to colonize. This stretch of land became free real estate because of the ice age as the ice formation sucked a lot of water out of the oceans, leaving them at a lower level. There was a big problem preventing people from leaving Beringia and getting into North America. The bouncers blocking their path were entirely too many glaciers. Traditionally, archaeologists suspected people got a chance to get into North America through a narrow corridor which opened up between the glaciers around 13,500 years ago. That would mean the continent was settled at about that time. In recent years, new archaeological sites have been found, with evidence pushing the date of occupation back to 16,000 years ago before the corridor opened. This would mean these guys skirted around the glaciers down the Pacific coast by boat. Other sites provide even older dates, but their claims are a tad controversial, as their evidence isn't as strong as it needs to be to say anything for certain. Like some artifacts found in a Mexican cave last year that suggest a date of 27,000 years, all of that was until now. The new study is helmed by lead author Matthew Bennett, an ancient footprint expert. It was co-authored by David Bustos, biologist, resource manager for the White Sands, and the guy I work with as I volunteer and hopefully intern at the White Sands National Park. Bustos is also the guy who found the human footprints in 2019. The footprints start out in softer sediment before disappearing into a layer of rock-hard gypsum. Only after a trench was dug into the hard layer did a better picture of the ancient scene materialize. Based on the stature and walking speed estimated from the prints, teenagers were the ones who made them. One hypothesis posits that this scene depicts a division of labor. Adults involved themselves in skilled tasks like hunting and building, while children and teens were delegated the responsibility of fetching and carrying things. Children and teenagers would go off to do these tasks together and therefore collectively left more footprints, which happened to be better at being recorded in the fossil record. Bones won't preserve in the gypsum sand, but seeds do. A bunch of seeds from an ancient form of spiral ditch grass were recovered from the same layer imprisoning the footprints. These seeds were used to carbon date the layer, which would give an approximate age of the footprints too. Once the seeds were collected, they were sent to a carbon dating lab in Denver, Colorado. They came back between 22,860 years plus or minus 300 years to 21,130 years plus or minus 250 years. You're never going to get an exact date since there are variables that skew the true date of the object, but the dates spat out from the lab are pretty good overall. 
Matthew Bennett and the team knew that getting these kinds of dates would draw extreme scrutiny to their evidence and its strength. The footprints are some of the strongest pieces of evidence for humans there is. Like, they are unequivocally human footprints. Dates, however, would be the thing that got nitpicked to death. To address any seed age skewing variables, they dated hundreds of seeds from different sediment layers. Their ages fell in line the way they should if they were accurate, oldest on bottom and youngest on top. One of the potential errors they wanted to make sure they weren't falling for is something called carbon reservoir effect. Organisms can incorporate carbon into their bodies, which leached out of surrounding rocks and into the water, such as calcium carbonate from limestone. If the seeds were subject to sucking up old carbon, which would skew the carbon dating, then they would have probably had a larger variation of dates coming back from the lab. Another site in the region corroborates the credibility of the seed dates. This other site didn't preserve any footprints, but did have seeds and charcoal in the same layer. Both the seeds and charcoal came back with the same dates. Charcoal is not subject to the carbon reservoir effect. The guys dating the seeds in the Colorado lab suggest the timing for the seeds is pretty spot on and with very little error. Even a 1,000 year error in the dates wouldn't mess with the importance of the timing of the footprints as they'd still be way older than previous records. There is one other possibility that might have skewed the seed dating. It's possible the seeds are older than the footprints and were deposited in a lower layer of sediment, which eroded out into the layer that holds the footprints. That would make it seem like the footprints are older than they are. One way to figure this out is to try optically stimulated luminescence dating. This method reveals when mineral grains were last exposed to light, which would tell when the seeds were first buried. The dates described in the new study are probably accurate, but another line of evidence to prove it would be good. These footprints make it extremely likely that their ancestors and the ancestors of other humans that left other, less obvious remains traveled along the Pacific coast to colonize America. The next step will be to identify the people who made these Ice Age voyages. We need bones, clothes, tools, and more to get an idea of who these folks were. A whole new chapter in the human story has just been opened up. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, and Arda Bayer, as well as my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, Dana Manchester, Chris Frampton, and Admin.